Welcome to Table Bible Studies with Dan and Ben. New studies are posted every Thursday. We've been learning about an extraordinary woman named Ruth and her travels to her mother-in-law's homeland. She'd forsaken all, and we're about to discover how God responded to Ruth as we join Dennis and Benedicta in the second chapter of Ruth. There's one thing we're not told uh, about Boaz. Uh, we get the, uh, it's clear that he's older than her, mm. significantly older. How much older, we don't know. We don't know. We're not told whether he was a handsome man, an ugly man, an overweight man, a skinny man. <laughs> we don't know. What we do, Shut up, tall, well tall. All we know is he is a respectful and kindly person. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, Women are first drawn to men by their looks, just like men are first drawn to women by their looks. But there are other things that are more important, and they eventually will m- either make or break a relationship, and yeah. that is respect, kindness, uh, love, and so forth. And he's shown all the attributes yes. a woman would want in a husband. Mm, I love that attribute. <laughs> so. So she's like, why would you be treating me this good? He says, well, I've, it's been reported to me. I've heard about how, you've, uh, how, you, how good you've been to your mother-in-law since your husband died. You've left your father and your mother. Uh, you've come to a people you don't know. The Lord repay your work and give a full reward uh, from the God of Israel under whose wings you've come for refuge. In other words, may God reward you for the sacrifices you've made to come to this land. Yes. He doesn't know yet, but he is part of that reward. She's right, going right. To get. So, which means Boaz, you know, uh, has um, had a little bit about um, Naomi and uh, Ruth, yeah. that Naomi is back. You know, with her is a Moabite woman. And uh, being that they are Jews, they'll be like, uh, you don't want to do anything with a Moabite woman. And then some people yeah. are kind of staying back, not going to visit. Right. Okay, they have been away for a long time. And then this rich man who is a family, yeah. you know, maybe he's waiting for Naomi to come and, yeah. uh, you know, greet him. But she's not going. And then uh, all the information is coming to him about their welfare, you'll be like, okay, um, let me go and give them some food or right. visit her or something, but that didn't and happen. What you read here, as you look at Boaz's character yeah. and Ruth's character, mm. these are two good people. Right. He's a good man. She's a good woman. They're just decent, respectful people of two different cultures, two different nationalities. Right. In a way, this is almost the Bible's commentary on racism. It's like these people don't care about the fact that they're from different cultures yeah. and different languages. And maybe their skin was even slightly different color. I don't know. Mm. But uh, their character is what counts. And he looked at her and said, and could see this is a good woman. And she looked at him and said, this is a good man. Yeah. And uh, when two good people are drawn together, it, it makes for a good marriage. You'll be like racism overlooked. Yeah. Racism. Racism is not just overlooked, but totally ignored. She says, let me find favor in your sight. Uh, You have comforted me. You've spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I'm not like one of your other maidservants. In other words, you know, I know I'm not like all these other ladies. Yeah. uh, But you're you're being so kind to me. And then he's he's not even done yet. Uh, When it comes to lunchtime. He comes up again, and you know you you, you have to think <laughs> he's really noticing her a lot. Yeah. you know he's paying a lot of attention. To Not this just that, visiting a lot. <laughs> yeah, he comes up to her at lunchtime. He says, "Come here, eat the bread and uh. dip your piece of bread in vinegar." Now, when I read that, I'm like, uh, I don't vinegar. know if I'd want to mm. dip my bread in vinegar, but I guess that was a custom in those days. Yeah. So she sat by the workers, the reapers. He passed grain to her, parched grain, roasted grain. She ate. She was satisfied. And uh, kept some back, so she didn't even eat all that she was given. Mm. And then he's still not done being nice to her. Mm-mm. When they get up to do some more work, and the the, the harvesters are going to do their harvesting, the gleaners are going to do their gleaning, which again means picking up the leftover stuff that falls to the ground. Uh, Boaz commands his workers, he says, let her glean even among the sheaves, and don't reproach her, don't criticize her. In other words... They're not, the gleaners are not supposed to go where the crops are growing. They're supposed to wait until the workers have harvested the crops, they've cut down everything, they've gathered in the harvest, and then you pick up off the ground. He says, if she wants to go into the actual harvest and And help herself, just let her. 
Uh, he he's under no obligation. Hey, this is just are unusual. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, look at favor. Yeah. You know. Well, that's uh, the word. It is favor. She favor has received favor from places. God and favor from Boaz I as know. well. Yeah. Wow. So he says, and let he's still not done. He says, verse sixteen: Let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her, mm. so that she can get more. Don't rebuke her. In other words. Let some of your grain that you're harvesting spill out onto the ground so she'll get some more. <laughs> like, he, he, boom, can, he can hardly do any more than what he's doing for this lady. He's doing too much for this lady. The other ladies will be like, okay, yeah. um, you're what, paying too, too much attention. <laughs> You're paying too much attention to this lady. Yeah. What about us? Uh-huh. Like, let it just spill for her. It would be like, oops, I, I just spilled a whole lot. Yeah. But it's okay. Uh, Missy, you can just uh, start from here. <laughs> you know? Well, it, it kind of reminds me of when uh, uh, I, we first met each other. The next day, I invited you to go around Lagos. Um, the pastor was going to take me for a tour of right. Lagos, and he brought a friend, and we were sitting in the back. And I was talking to you almost nonstop and hardly (laughs) noticing the two pastors in the front. They probably thought, why is he talking to this lady so much and not saying much to us? I I wasn't trying to be rude, but uh, my attention was drawn to you. And I think that's kind of what's going on here with Boaz. Yeah, even before we went to this, the the, um, looking around uh, Lagos thing, you brought a candy to me. Yeah. um, uh, For me, you gave me a candy bar and then you didn't. And some cheese as well. Yeah, and and, uh, cheese. And then you didn't give to the pastors that were there. I'm like, okay, (laughs) why am I getting. And so maybe you thought they have uh, taken their breakfast because you asked me, have well, you eaten right. breakfast? I, I asked you if you had eaten breakfast and you said no, and I felt sorry for you. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, he's just kind of really overdoing it. It says she gleaned in the field until evening, beat out what she had gleaned. It was about an ephah of barley. Now, uh, an ephah is a, it's a, is a large amount. Now, there's some question about the actual name and, and measurement here. But if it was truly an ephah, that's like a, a bushel. That's like a big basket full of grain. Really? So she would have been taking a, a large basket home yeah. to mother-in-law. And uh, she, whatever amount it was, it was a lot. And so she did better than you would expect a lady to be just gathering little bits of, of fallen uh, right, barley right. from the ground. And uh, so it says she uh, took it to her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law saw what, what she brought. She, and uh, so her mother-in-law said, where have you gleaned today? She mm. still doesn't know. Yeah, she was where in she Boaz went field. to. Mm. Where did you work? Blessed is the one who took notice of you. So she told him mm. and said, his, well, the man's name was Boaz. Yeah. And Naomi starts praising God. Mm. Suddenly, you know, she starts thinking about Boaz. Well, yeah, he's a, a relative of my late husband. Yeah. She says, blessed be he of the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. It's like, hey, God is being good to us. This, this is an important man. He's a wealthy man and he happens to be a relative of my husband. Yeah. And Naomi said, this man is a relation of ours, a close relative. Ruth said, well, he also said, stay close to my young men until they finished all my harvest. So in other words, he said, you come back tomorrow and just keep coming back. Yeah. Keep gleaning here. Don't go anywhere else. Don't go else. anywhere else. Naomi says to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that you go out with this young woman, uh, with his young wom- women, rather, and yeah. that the people do not meet you in any other field. So in other words, listen to what he said. Now, again, we're reminding everyone and reminding ourselves this is revealing uh, Jesus, how he connects with us. We are the Moabitess. We are the outsider looking in. We're the one who feels like I don't have any place uh, in the kingdom. I don't have any place in the family. God started with Abraham. He began to work with the Jews. I'm a Gentile. I don't fit. I don't belong. I don't speak the same language. Mm. Jesus comes along and says, I'm interested in you. Just as Boaz, he could hardly have made it any more plain than he did. Right. I'm interested in you, Ruth. I find you, I find you fascinating. Uh, I, I like you, Ruth. Jesus draws us. He woos us by his kindness, right? Yeah, If his Jesus love. was harsh and unloving, we wouldn't be won to Christ. No. The, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Mm. And he shows us, I love you. I want you in my family. And when mm. we receive Christ and become joined to him, just like Ruth was eventually joined to Boaz, yes. uh, we're part of the family. And we who have been the outsider, the gleaner, the one looking in from the outside, feeling like we're not worth anything. Anything yeah. are suddenly 
uh, a big deal in the kingdom. We're suddenly part of the family yes. and uh, 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 officially married to Christ in, in that sense. Yeah, I was like thinking, you know, the first thing uh, God announced to us was like, for God so loved the world. Yeah. The, that is like telling us, I love you. Yeah. I love you this much that I have come. Right. I have sent my, you know, beloved son to come and get, get you back home, you know. And then it was like, okay, um, that love kind of expanded into going to the cross, you know, to pay the price that we couldn't pay and, yeah. you know, die the death we couldn't die and then restored our lives. Now we are no longer seen as sinners or, you know, or unrighteous people. Now we are, we are seen as righteous, righteous people in Christ Jesus. Now we are the righteousness in Christ Jesus. You know, like the Corinthians said, oh, all, all this, you know, that Boaz is showing her is love. Yeah. Kindness. I love you and I want to provide for you. You know, this is how much I can provide for you right now. I can do more if you can just listen to me. If you can just draw, you know, closer and closer to me. Right. If you can just stay. Just stay here because one thing, he's a, you know, a, a Jewish man who grew up in the Jewish land. He knows what other men can do to a, a pretty woman out there, you know, all by herself going uh, farm to farm or bush areas. Yeah. You know, like you don't even know the land. You, you may get hot. Right. You know, you may, so he's like, I want to protect you. Stay here. Come back tomorrow and still glean. I, will order, I have already ordered my men to just leave a little, a whole lot for you. So you yeah. get a whole lot. You and, know. and what the boss says goes, right? <laughs> yeah, so. what the boss says goes. When the boss says, you leave her alone, they leave her alone. The boss says, you spill out some grain for her. Yeah. That's what they do. Give him, give her some water and the food, yeah, more food. Yeah, make sure she has water. Make sure she have a ni has a nice lunch. <laughs> yeah. And send her home, you know, a happy lady. Yes. And so, you know, she's got to notice all this, right? I mean, yeah. she's just kind of overwhelmed. It's like, I didn't expect much. I was just hoping I could just, you know, pick up a little grain here and there. And this guy is just so this good is to the, me. The blessings of God, yeah. because you will think, okay, there will be resentment. This is a Moab, a Moabite, a, a you know, ungodly yeah. woman. And now this man ordered her to drink from where the you know Jewish men are drinking from. Right. The Jewish the men will be like. Hmm. Maybe some rabbi in there. Maybe not no rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> unclean, unclean. <laughs> unclean, unclean. <laughs> it's unclean ladies drinking yeah. from the same vessels as we are. Right. There's going to be like uh, this, uh, um, oh, stay away from us. You are a Moabite woman. Yeah. Oh, you, when you're coming, bring your water next time. <laughs> right. So it says, as we close uh, this chapter, she stayed close by the young men, uh, young women, rather, of Boaz. So mm. she's right uh, with the other young Jewish ladies to glean until the end of barley harvest and wheat harvest, harvest and she dwelt with her mother-in-law. So uh, basically, there's a barley harvest goes on probably a couple of weeks, and then following that, the wheat is, is now ready to be harvested, yes. so another couple of weeks. So basically, she has a month of, of income. Yes. And then after that, if something isn't done, she's in trouble, and mm. Naomi's in trouble because there's no more harvesting going on. Oh. But by that point, things will have changed, as changed. we're going to see. So the providence of God, the love of God... And the provision of God, the protection of God is all over this lady. As it turned out, her decision to follow Naomi was the smartest decision of her life. Uh, a lot of people would have criticized her. A lot of Moabites would have said, what are you doing leaving your people, leaving your family? Yeah. Uh, here's where you're comfortable. This is, this is where you grew up and you're leaving us to go to those foreign Israelites. What in the world? That's, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. As it turned out, it was the smartest thing she could have done. It's never yeah. dumb to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And she's going to be so incredibly blessed because she did. Probably most of you know my wife, Benedicta, but few of you know the amazing paths God has led her to bring her to where she is today. Benedicta was orphaned at an early age and lived with an elderly stepmother growing to adolescence. They were so poor, Benedicta had to drop out of school and sell food door to door for them to survive. As a teen, Benedicta got a job as a housemaid, which developed into a nightmare. She was required to cook, clean, wash, take care of the children, and she had to get up at 4 a.m. every day just to get her work started. Worse than that, she was frequently beaten. At around 20, she moved to the huge city of Lagos where she started her own little business. Sometimes she prospered, but at other times she nearly starved and went days at a time without eating. At one point, she became so sick she passed out in her room 
and nearly died. She found herself outside of her body, and she was able to see the splendors of heaven until she was sent back with a command to share her story. One day, however, her life changed when an American evangelist came to her community to preach, and of course, that was me. The rest, as they say, is history. Benedicta has shared her life story in a recently published autobiography, and you can get it on Amazon as either an ebook or a paperback. A link to this book on Amazon is in the description.